Assassin's Creed in five minutes, sort of. Everything you need to know about the story so far. Spoiler alert. In the beginning, before humans even existed, the first civilization ruled the planet. This advanced society creates humanity as a slave labor force and controls them with powerful technology called Pieces of Eden, tech that could literally control minds. However, not all members of the first civilization want slaves. A few even start families with humans, creating a new hybrid race of people who are immune to the Pieces of Eden. Ideologies clash, and a war quickly breaks out to free the human slaves. Amid the scuffle, a bigger problem is brewing. A solar flare is about to decimate the entire planet. Three first civilization scientists, Juno, Minerva, and Jupiter, lead research teams to come up with a defense. Nothing works, and one of the plans, a project to separate consciousness from a body, results in the death of Juno's husband. Running out of options, Minerva creates a powerful and dangerous device called the Eye, a machine that can manipulate the very patterns of existence. Grief-stricken and a wee bit insane, Juno learns of the Eye and plans to hijack it to take over the world. Minerva and Jupiter are able to imprison her in the main research vault, but Juno still gets her revenge. She tampers with the eye so that turning it on would actually unleash Juno's digital consciousness onto the world as a vengeful godlike being. What. A. Jerk. Because of this, Minerva makes the decision to not turn on the machine and most of Earth's population is destroyed, basically resetting civilization in the process. <laughs> but, but at least we're done with those solar flares, right? Oh no, no we're not. Nerva finds out that the entire destructive cycle will happen again in the year 2012. To warn her descendants, she transmits messages into the future using genetic memory, passing these messages down a giant family tree until the chosen one figures out a solution. A new era for humanity begins, and memory of the first civilization fades in time. But unfortunately, their dangerous technology does not. The pieces of Eden, such as the Apple of Eden, are scattered throughout the world and worshipped throughout history as powerful religious objects. Since these artifacts have the ability to control people's minds, one secret society in particular, named the Knights Templar, decide that they want this power for themselves. Their ultimate goal is to create a world of complete order by robbing people of free will. Standing in their way is a group of idealistic freedom fighters called the Assassins. Throughout history, a number of the world's greatest men and women side with either the Assassins or Templars, and the two groups tirelessly wage war against each other in secret. This brings us to the year 2012, when the Templars kidnap a young ex-assassin named Desmond Miles. They force him into a machine called the Animus, a device that allows a person to relive past experiences of their ancestors by accessing genetic memories. As it so happens, Desmond is a descendant of some of the greatest assassins ever. Altair, who lived in the 12th century, and Ezio of the 15th century, Renaissance Italy. Via the Animus and his new group of assassin friends, Desmond learns about the Pieces of Eden and why the Templars and the Templar-run corporation Abstergo need to be stopped. But complicating things is that pesky solar flare. Through Ezio's memories, Desmond finds out that he's Minerva's chosen one, and it's up to him to save the entire planet. He's eventually led to the First Civilization's Central Research Vault, but is immediately contacted by Juno, still trapped inside, who tells him that activating the Eye will save the world. She leads them into the genetic memories of Haytham Kenway and his son Connor in order to find the key that turns it on. Desmond is successful, but Minerva pops up just before Desmond activates it. She tells him that triggering the eye will simultaneously kill him and unleash a vengeful Juno onto the world. It was Minerva's hope that the assassins and Templars would work together to save the world, but you know, so much for that. She then pleads with Desmond to let the world get destroyed, again, so that survivors can continue to live in freedom. However, not willing to step aside, Desmond makes the call to activate the eye and sacrifices his life to save everyone else. It's a bittersweet day, especially since Juno, who's literally been waiting entire centuries for this to happen, starts to plot a revenge on the entire world. But that'll have to wait, for now. Undeterred in their mission for world order, the Templar slash Abstergo obtain the remains of Desmond and use it to access his genetic memories. Abstergo's entertainment division hires a person to relive the memories of Edward Kenway, Haytham's pirate father. They tell this employee that the research is for a new pirate game and movie, but of course, this is just a cover. The Templar's actual goal is to find the Observatory, a first civilization vault that uses blood samples to spy on anyone in the world. During the search, the Absurgo employee wises up to the Templar's insanity and is recruited by Desmond's friends Sean and Rebecca and the head of Absurgo Entertainment's IT department, John, a man hired by the assassins to keep tabs on Desmond's remains. However, John is not what he seems and has his own agenda. He's actually a sage of the instruments of the First Will, a group dedicated to resurrecting Juno into a new body. And if that wasn't enough, John is also the modern day incarnation of the pirate Bartholomew Roberts. And if that wasn't enough, he's also the reincarnation of Juno's ancient dead husband, Item. 
Yes, before Aita actually died, Juno fixed it so he would be reincarnated throughout time. Whoa. Unfortunately for John, everything goes to hell for him. Resurrecting Juno fails because she's still too weak to possess a body. John is found out by Abstergo security, and the might be immortal dude meets a bitter end. Which isn't so bad because he'll probably just come back again. Drop your weapon! However, that is not the end of this story of assassins, Templars, and digital gods. The return of Juno is still imminent, and the Templars will not stop with their mission. No one knows what Juno is capable of, but the assassins know that dark times are coming. With Desmond gone, hopefully they will find a new strength to stop the impending destruction.